Mr. Tommy Katona, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time. Uh, no problem, man. My pleasure. This. I'm super excited uh, for this. Like I told you, we've done like the how to Holdsworth thing for a right. while on the channel, and um, this is going to be so refreshing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> to talk about Stevie for me, uh, I think for a lot of people, you know, it's because uh, okay. well, it's I like th this kind of music. You know, it's like physically very mystifying for people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but like there is something about it that's still within the realm of the familiar, uh, which is right. it's just, it's just going to be. Uh... Anyways, so I guess the, watching your videos, like a, a great thing, to, a great place to start, uh, which is really sort of over talked about online, but still very few people get it right. It's just getting a sound. Yeah. Like. That's the magic. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the magic. That's, and that's the never ending, you know, journey to find it. <laughs> right, right. So so just in terms of like some basic, you know, stuff, like let's assume people have a strat in some some form of a tube yeah. amp. Like, yeah, well, first off, you don't have to have this strat to right. to sound <laughs> to sound kind of like Stevie. You don't you don't need an SRV, you know, you right. just need a Stratocaster that has a, well, probably a, a, a rosewood fretboard, mm -hmm. if possible. I mean, I like maple too, but it's just, I don't know, the feel and the sound to me, it's, I don't know, I'm a little bit more, more of a rosewood type of person. Uh-huh. But, um, but yeah, you, you got to have a Strat with uh, relatively lower output pickups, mm -hmm. not high output. That's, right, not those Texas specials. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, no offense, they're they're great and everything. But if you want to get that more chimey, detailed, uh, more pleasant sound, you know, you, you got to have something more vintage. Sure. What what do you use specifically? So uh, a good friend of mine who lives up uh, out in the, the D.C. area, his name is Mike McConaughey. He's been making Wawa pedals and pickups for me throughout uh -huh. in the last, I want to say, decade or so. Uh -huh. um, so I'm I'm using his pickups and in, in okay. guitar and a couple of my my other guitars. Cool. Yeah. All right. And, and, and also it, I'm using his Wawa that he. Oh. Very cool. Maybe we'll link it in the description so people can check yeah, it. it. Yeah, it's called McConawa. Okay. Great. Great. Well, we, can, we can put it in the. In the Awesome. So we'll check that out. And I see that you have them sort of low to the body, relatively, in terms of uh, the, the height. Oh, the height? Yeah, it's not, not super high, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, got some, little, you got some air in between. Tiny, tiny bit higher on the treble side. Uh huh. Just to balance the volumes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, at this moment, I'm using uh, a little uh, Vox. Mm -hmm. What is this VT twenty plus? Sure, a modeling game, but it's it's got a tube in it, so it sounds pretty good, you know. Yeah, it, it does the job, you know. Yeah, yeah, get getting the tone, cool, man. Yeah. And in terms of like strings, gauges, picks, uh, like that, just to I, get that stuff out of the way and not over obsessed. Yeah. So I've been using the last few years. I've been using Elixir uh -huh. uh, OptiWeb. Okay. And believe it or not, it's it's a set of ten forty six. Okay. Cool. It's plain and that. simple. You can buy it at any guitar center. There's and no and do you do you tend to do you tend to play like an E flat or E flat most e -flat. of the time? Yeah, especially okay. with my band, you know. But sometimes, you know, when I have to teach. Uh, uh -huh. And things you know i, I keep uh, a couple of guitars in standard tuning as well okay great so, yeah yeah that's awesome so awesome. yeah it's it's well this is definitely set up for the, the stevie thing you know obviously sure and and how is your action um i mean it's not super low uh -huh. it's kind of in between I, I i cannot tell you measurement because I yeah of course i never really measure but i mean you know it's not yeah like i said it's not super medium super low you know i got still room because the, the thing is that you don't want to have a super low action because especially when you bend you know want to 
you want to be able to grab it and you know pull it up or yeah so get under the string down. get underneath yeah exactly because i don't you don't want to you know bounce off of it or slide yeah. off yeah and i think for, yeah. for most most people especially that come from the fusion world that's where they start running into technical problems where their actions are sort of set up for playing a lot of legato lines and yeah. when they're like trying to you know use left hand articulation they slam into the other strings and and make all that extra noise yeah, yeah. i mean you know on, on this one is definitely a little bit a little bit higher than like when whenever i play my, my last ball for example. Mm -hmm. That that has pretty low action. It plays like butter is fast. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it's strat strat in general is a different kind of animal. You know, you gotta you ca you have to work a Stratocaster a lot more than than a than a Gibson. You sure, know? you you fight humbuckers, it. Humbuckers, humbuckers, they they sing. You know, they just they're just fat and you know warm and full and everything and reactive. Stratocaster, you gotta you know sometimes you gotta punch it a little bit more uh, Great. that's my experience okay so, well what's a good what's a good uh you know way to dig into the actual technique involved like the right hand technique involved the left hand technique involved um i would say like what do you think a good starting point is to people who have who are familiar with the music but aren't getting the sound? Uh huh. You know, I'm talking uh, about like technically. Technically, yeah. So that's that's always been a kind of a, a myth, you know. Ever since I, I was you know growing up and trying to figure out how to how to do it, how to make it sound right, uh, and I realized that <laughs> you know after you know, trying you know different guitars and pedals and amps and stuff you know of course you know when i was growing up in hungary you know i didn't really have that many options sure so i was just dreaming about having a fender stratocaster made in usa you know right and i had a, a, a pv amp and a and a boss blues driver that was I, mean, I, I grew up in israel i had the same pv amp i think there you go <laughs> i had a pv classic i had a pv classic i had a pv classic and a pv wolfgang so yeah. <laughs> that's the that's not... combo 410 that was the four man <laughs> super reverb you know that's you know that's correct yeah a great amp great <laughs> yeah. i mean to yeah. this day you know if you can find one for a few hundred bucks it's a great amp so yeah if yeah. if you don't want to spend that much money on a fender you know it's 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 a good alternative for sure but but as far as like playing uh stevie stuff it it it, it really is in the in the hand Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta just play those notes a certain way uh and it's one thing that you know what to do with the left hand or you know fretting hand but then the right hand is really the 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 big secret sauce the yes way, the way you pick the way you mm. touch a note just one note you know because there's so many different ways to, to touch touch a note with different uh attack act you know the dynamics yeah. so, so. Uh, side of the pick the tip of the pick the, the you know pitch harmonic i mean there's a bazillion different ways to um to touch a guitar in general of course so let's let's i i guess can we dig into like some yeah. of those right hand things that you would consider the common things that he does that are different and what mo how people tend to pick yeah, yeah. So Stevie's Stevie's right hand was really, really interesting because he could go from the softest, most delicate uh, picking, you know, just barely touching it, to like the when he just really slams into it. Like I mean, you you you've seen and, and Stevie fans probably seen Stevie, you know, like you know hitting the hell out of the guitar and and all that. Sure. Stuff. They're like the windy yeah. kind of motions, yeah. Oh yeah, and I mean, you know, it's not just visuals. It actually right. sometimes you gotta you gotta do certain things to do a certain sound. You gotta right. do that, but um, it, it's really the 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 way the perfect way that he 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 could he could use his right hand and and his dynamics were just unbelievable like from, you know you know just the some notes 
were kind of quiet and all of a sudden, you know, he punches a note a little bit harder. So it's right. almost like if somebody was, you know, setting the volume knob up and down constantly. Kind Just of that constantly but, in the peak valleys dynamically. But that's all in here. It's all right. in the right hand. So <clears throat> whenever I teach guitar, you know, I try to uh, make all the students understand about dynamics mm. and I make them practice to play one note, whatever note on the guitar, mm -hmm. from the from the quietest, mm -hmm. softest, mm -hmm. and just like if you you know turn the volume up, you just go up by picking harder. Mm -hmm. Now the rest strokes, like the the kinds of strokes that you're using for a downstroke, I guess, and that, like and where the motion comes from. Like, I'm, so uh, I see that you're sort of like planting your your fingers up and then rotating the wrist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Stevie had this really cool way to, to hit hit the note. Because he was completely loose. Yeah. So they say that, you know, he had a heavy attack and aggressive and all that. Uh, somewhat it's true, but not 100% because I feel like, you know, he was just so loose all the time. Yeah, like, it's like momentum, like just, it, just like the weight of the hand cutting through yeah. it. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of finesse. Yes. Play. You know, and I, I, I always say that, that um, I'm trying to compare it to like boxing. Uh -huh. When you you box, you have to like keep on moving, and and you know at the right moment you just bam, you know you just right. punch. But you, yeah. you you are loose the whole time. So that's kind of what's happening with the guitar. That you you are loose with your arm. Uh huh. But at the right moment when you hit that that has to be a punch you know it's like and of course to be able to do that uh freely with the right hand you gotta learn how to mute with your left hand right so that's another thing that you know i, I also teach the like strumming strumming maybe all six strings at the same time You're just getting that one note but, to really yeah yeah, yeah. So that's uh -huh. a huge, huge part of it. So when you when you listen to stuff like uh, uh, "So Excited," I mean, he's doing. This. So that's, that's, it's, it's got those downstroke, but also yeah, but those rakes. So I'm, I'm, when you're doing that kind of raking, first of all, that sounded awesome. Uh, oh, I, yeah, uh, but with, like, let's. Whoa, sorry about that. Can, can you? Oh. Uh, put that thing? Um, yeah, we're not expecting anybody, uh, but. Um, when you're doing that raking kind of motion, I'm not, you're sort of rolling the cord with your with your left hand. So what's yeah, going on there? Exactly. So you kind of have to roll it with, with the strum. That's cool. So you don't just press down like... Uh -huh. you, can't, you can't get the same sound. Uh -huh. You kind of have I to think. like roll with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, cool. And, and the thing is that you, you don't necessarily have to be very hard with the pick. It's, it's kind of a... See, I'm not... I'm not... Are you, when you get to the E string, it's an upstroke or... It's an up. Okay. Oh, actually, it's... Yeah, take the do, right? Yeah, so you get all the way through and then you repeat that all low. The way through. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. and you know, just a small example between the touch of Hendrix and Stevie. Uh -huh. So, uh, just an example, Voodoo Chow. Uh -huh. So, 
when when Jimmy played Voodoo Child, he was a lot more, I want to say, more like de- delicate and uh, a little more gentle when he picked. You know, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Of course, you know I don't have a wawa, but right. uh, but you get the idea. So it's kind of yeah, yeah. he's uh, right by the string, sort of plucking. Yeah, and then when when Stevie covered Voodoo Chow, uh-huh. it sounded more like. <laughs> So he had that he had that heavy hand, you know. Yeah, yeah. And just it's a lot of like strumming and relying on the left hand muting to get mm-hmm. the comfortable. Yeah. So what yeah. I, I gotta sorry to bring this back to gear. What kind of pick do you use? Because your attack sound it's like a medium kind of thing. <laughs> well, right in the moment I'm using a, a, a Toyota Music Factory. Oh nice. <laughs> Those are the best. Which is uh it's sort of like a medium, I think. Okay, it's thin. Uh, I picked up some some picks at Toyota Music Factory here in Dallas when we played. So that's long story okay. short. And that's why I have that. But most of the time, uh, I use these. So it's like what 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 thickness is that? This is the uh, the point seventy three thickness. Yeah, it sounds totally different because I play with these thick picks. 70, yeah, seventy three. Uh, I like I like medium heavy. Definitely. When you're playing, like, let's say, if you play something heavy, like heavy, heavy, like 1.5, 2 millimeters, do you feel like that affects your tone in a negative way for this kind of stuff? It's not necessarily the tone, because um, sometimes I like the sound of the, the thicker picks, especially with the, the beveled edge. Uh-huh. You know, it, it really drives a, a very good, but it's not good for everything that I do. You know, okay. so sometimes you know, I'm I'm still experimenting with picks. You know, sometimes people give me uh, different picks. Hey, try this. You know, here's a V pick. Yeah. Here's a wooden pick. Here's a whatever. You know, so I here's a different shape. Like you know, I've been trying to experiment with one of these. Yeah, and I like it. So it's it's just uh, different. But okay. I'm, I'm very open. But you know, Stevie used most of the time mediums, as far as I know. Yeah, there's something in the attack when you're playing, when he's playing, that it's just like, I don't want to call it like a, it's a percussiveness that I'm hearing. Yeah. It's like, there's like a papery quality to like the thinner picks when they bend. It just makes things sound awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess yeah. it, 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 it can affect it. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. A little, maybe a little softer, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, just, uh, like just, I said, it's it's at the end, it's 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 all in here. Like yeah. So, so if you're talking about like let's say the motion mechanics of your mm-hmm. of your right hand, yeah. Um, like I come from a lot of um, I play a lot of gypsy jazz, a lot of Django Reinhardt type thing. I love and, that stuff, man. Yeah. So that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, so it's like for me, like you know, I always notice that the rest stroke technique that we use in that kind of music is almost identical to the Stevie stuff. Like it's not at points, it's not, but like a lot of times when he's digging into a note, it's like really like just this curved wrist and like, and this yeah, yeah. Kind of way of driving. Yeah, it's, it's just so much from like so much more in common with Django than it is with uh, like John Petrucci or like you know. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, or like a shredder, right? It's like it's. Well, really yeah, you got you got a good point you know? there because uh, uh, Django Django was one of uh, Stevie's earliest influences. Yeah, you well, know? so you listen to Django and Wes Montgomery and Kenny Burrell, and he listened yeah. to a lot of a lot of jazz and jazz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like so, that. That stuff and it is, shows. It it really does. It really when, shows. when you're when you're doing the right hand picking, I, I I guess like I want you to show. It's like sort of where the motion is is rooted from. Like I know there's a lot of different techniques you're using, but if so, you're like, the default one, the one that's used most of the time. 
So mostly yeah, it's, 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 it's wrist and, and, and I guess part fingers a little bit. Fingers. Uh, I mean, may, maybe just uh, the, the way I hold the pick and I sometimes, I, you know, I, I, I tense up, I grip. You know, so you actually, you actually play from that joint a little bit? Uh, not quite. That's what Ingwe does. Right. Right? In, Ingwe, In, Ingwe can shred, like, from here. Uh -huh. He does that. I don't know uh -huh. how. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's really weird. But, you know, whenever I do that, you know, the, the alternate or tremolo picking, it's, it's just regular, you know, wrist. Yeah. And the problem is that I'm left-handed. Oh. So I learned to play this way, <laughs> obviously. And I found out later that my left wrist is a lot quicker than my ah. right. A lot more natural to... That's crazy, yeah. Do that. See, I can do that, but I'm kind of having a hard time uh, uh -huh. doing the tremolo picking. I mean, I can still do it, but it's not as natural. I kind of have to like work extra <laughs> I see. to make it happen. So I just kind of tense my arm up to be able to, to, to oh, go faster. When to do that, it. okay. So it's, it's really coming from tension, a lot of tension from the arm. So it's, you know. I see, with, with a flatter, yeah, yeah with, with a flatter wrist. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but when I, when I phrase especially something faster, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, the economy picking, when you go so a lick like that so it's like down 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 up down down up i see yeah you see then you continue right like with a down yeah. And you can keep doing the down. So that's yeah. that's one that's one big uh, famous lick that Stevie stole from Hendrix. Uh huh. It's the, uh, that's yeah. The, uh, that kind of thing. Like, that's yeah. the first half of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then and you go. Yeah. Okay, and in terms of picking, yeah. That that last bit, that last group of like, how do you pick that? Down. Nothing but down. Down, down, down. Really? Pull offs. Uh, yeah, so like for me, naturally, I would go down, up, pull off, up, pull. Possible. Possible. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah. trying to express it's, my individuality. I'm trying to learn. No, no, no I know. <laughs> uh, but, see, I always say that, that, that there are certain things that has to be done a certain way. I feel like, For but there are there are things like this, like that. If you do alternate at the end, you know, it it sounds. Like yeah. I'm just so used to the, the down down. Yeah. The Stevie yeah. picked a whole lot down. When you watch him, mm -hmm. and he's not, you know, like, you know, fr phrasing a solo or something like that, playing a rhythm, uh, there's a whole lot of downstrokes. Consecutive downstrokes like uh, that. Especially, yeah. you know, when, when he plays uh, stuff like a, a blues shuffle, you know. Not Pride and Joy. Now, that's a different, uh, it's a whole different story. But, but whenever he plays that, you know, the Texas shuffle, which is the... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's like for the riff itself, it's all downstrokes. Like, um, um, downstrokes. Um, 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 right, okay. Uh -huh. And you know, a lot of people cannot feel the 
that the where the the weight is in the shuffle. Uh, it, it seems a little bit like rhythmically staggered. Like it's not like bum ba bum ba. It's bum ba 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 ba. Right? It's just like yes, like sir. a little a little bounce. Yes, sir. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's yeah. kind of backwards. That's why it's kind of hard to do. Yeah. Because because it's not really driving. It's more in the pocket. <laughs> When you, when you slow it down, especially, it shows. So yeah. if you want to learn, uh, I feel like that the, the way Stevie played the, the shuffle this way, you got to go all the way back to Jimmy Reed. Mm. Jimmy Reed was the, the main guy who, who started playing with the... That kind of lazy way, you know. But rhythmically, it doesn't. It's like the, the cool thing about it is that it's really not a triplet, right? It's like not like one, two, uh, 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 one, uh, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four. Uh, and but the, you, you uh, but uh, the way you do it, it's more like. like yours feels a little bit, or his feels like a little bit more staggered. Yeah, well, I mean, you can you can tighten it up, like right. uh, the the tight shuffle, or what I call. Is for example uh, some of the Jimmy Vaughn stuff, mm -hmm. especially the you can hear the drummers like. So it's a lot tighter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's it's really it's really cool. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. And we, got, and we got the pride and joy groove, which is it requires the circular motion. You know, mm -hmm. that's how you you create the shuffle instead of doubling. You go this. So the, introducing the upstroke, like the idea behind it, isn't to be like more economical with speed. It's to change the time feel. To make those yeah those like upbeats feel yeah. different, right? Like going uh -huh. from like yeah. this kind of thing, yeah. and and not just up and down because he was leaning forward every time. So for so uh 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 uh. uh. I see. Just super clean with that. Yeah. See, I, I've, I've seen people trying to do like, like doing with a like power chord. It's never, it's never a power chord anywhere. It's all individual notes. So it's just like a single note with kind of like the left hand muting to get the thickness behind it. And then like those, uh, yeah. Like just triads at the end of the phrases. Yeah, so yeah. it's a, it's, it's just the, the top, top two, three string, yeah. triad, root, and then add the major, major third. So that's, that was one of his, you know, common, uh, Phil licks. You know I mean? Yeah. Uh, now, now when, when you, and the previous example, I, I have to tune down to E flat for a second. It's going to take one minute just because oh, yeah. this, uh, this is really frustrating to be away from you tonally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got you to be an E flat for Stevie. That's right. That's <laughs> great. I had this guitar set up perfect for it. And then, uh, and then I, you know, just decided to go a different route. Uh, with it, and now I miss it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Cool. What kind of strap do you have? This is a sewer, and uh, I have those. Yeah, and I have those. Um, do, do you know uh, what's his name? Uh, I forget his name. The guy that has king tone effects. Oh, Jesse. Jesse, yeah, Jesse Davy. Yeah, you know Jesse. I do, and yeah, so these are I, I put his pickups in this. Oh. Bluebirds. So yeah, the bluebirds. So they're they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. Yeah, they are. Um, Jesse's awesome. 
Yeah, he's yeah. a he's a he's a friend, and you know I, I respect him a lot. Yeah, dude, he's great, great, great player. He's yeah, very, you know, very very detail oriented guy. Mm -hmm. It that. seems like it seems like all the guys that are really you know that really get it get the sound have to be because that music you can't uh, you can't just sort of press in the places Stevie pressed and expect anything to happen. It's more, it's, it's all about like drawing the sound out of the instrument. Right. It's like, you have to see it very clearly. Um, really, you really have to put in the work to be able to, you know, play with all those details and embellishments and all of that. So yeah, it's, it's not easy to do. <laughs> it's not oh. easy. Took me a lot of years to get here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been playing guitar for over three decades now. <laughs> well, well, it shows. It shows. Uh, now, when you when you were doing the that original shuffle, you kind of had this turnaround at the end with these sweeping kind of upward sweeps, like those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It... That's so that's pick, a... picking that's wise. That was like down, up, up. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. You, you slide up, right? Like that. Yeah. Yeah. When you rake up, it, it, it should sound like a, like a glisson. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Yes, hold on. Ah, I see. So you're doing it with the open strings? Open strings, yeah. Oh! Yeah. Sick. Now you were doing something with like a with a like a middle finger pluck on the top yes. string after that so it's like yeah. that's a great point to mention uh so stevie well he 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 plucked the e string quite a lot yeah i think uh, sometimes he did that because of the albert king licks but not just them you know he kind of he had that <laughs> Like he had that, that middle finger available uh, almost all the time. Does that take the place of an upstroke, typically yeah. in the picking? Yeah. So, uh, so let's take uh, I Ain't Gonna Give Up On Love as an example. Uh -huh. You know that song, right? Yeah? Now, that song is based off of Albert King. And mm -hmm. it's totally Albert King territory. The, the way he plays there, all the solos, uh, the, uh, especially when he plays up here. Yeah? He's he's emulating Albert's thumb. Because Albert was doing this down. But uh -huh. here, because the strings were backwards, yeah. right? So right. he was doing this. You know, right. But it's so it's it's completely, you know. Yeah. It sounds great. And this this whole thing is that lay yeah. right there. So that's like mul multiple like notes in a row, all with your with your ring finger, or with your middle finger, I mean. Yeah. 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 So it's big, big and block. Yeah. 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 To yeah. Yeah, to totally great stuff. So All right. So, but, because I, I saw your video when you were talking about uh, I, we're, got, we're sort of going all over the place, which is great because I think, you know, the big topic here is picking and like the different techniques involved. And uh, like I saw the video you made about scuttlebutting, uh, scuttlebutting. And uh, mm -hmm. when I see a lot of his live videos, like the way you broke it down made a lot of sense to me with like 
with the way that like the picking was the way the upstrokes and downstrokes were were laid out but in that in that thing does he, like live i saw him a bunch of times it's it looked like he was using his middle finger to pinch some of those notes in the fast lick so uh, are like upstrokes yeah. and those plucks pretty interchangeable yeah and i was gonna say that you're right he he did use the the middle finger mm -hmm. he, he did pluck but not always not every time yeah so when you watch for example the uh the the montro 85 and the guitar sound the guitar tone is very clean yeah super clean so you can really hear what's going on and mm -hmm. i tried to like study that too and yeah he, he definitely uses the the middle finger there the middle finger to, to pluck yeah. inside that fast lick yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's a little snappier. Now, when you when you do that, that that like uh, you know, that's one of those things that I honestly never got together, and I've, I feel like I've the first time I tried, I might have been fifteen. Uh, so it's been like a good, uh, you know, a good few decades uh, having that hovering around. When you get to the end of the lick, what is going on? Sort of with that big strong to it on the so end. I, I figured that he was doing uh, just a rake. A rake? Like an, uh, just an octave. So it, it goes kind of like. Now, when he gets to that low E, back to the high E, it does all the strings or just from that point on? So that's just one down. That that E note, like that blues lick. Does, how do you how do you pick that? It's a, a part of the rake. It's so a part of the rake. It's it's part yeah. So the rake actually is that first downbeat. Oh, that's when the drum comes in. That makes that makes a lot of sense. He's doing the so it's uh, from then on, it's it's down on the uh, the low E and up on the on the top. Uh huh. Right. Also, you're not you're not really, you're not playing like an E seven sharp nine or yeah like a like a Hendrix chord. You're just playing these two e top seven, notes. E seven sharp nine without the major third. Oh, no major third. That is it. That it just drives me nuts whenever someone. It's, it's, it's ugly. Not, it's not there. It's not in the music. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just sounds like a clutter to me. I've heard people playing Mary Had a Little Lamb, but it's too much. It's not in there. Yeah, yeah, it makes it a lot more open and just airy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Less, okay. Less is more. Yeah. I tend, I tend to play with smaller chords a lot of times, you know. I, I don't. I don't always play, play big fat chords. Play a, a lot of diets and try it. Yeah, it's just like two or three note chords. You know, just kind of more. Yeah, less is more, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's totally great. Okay, I hate to go get back in, uh, again and again to the gear talk, no, uh, that's fine. but but Anything. but in terms in terms of like EQing to get the sound, like what's when you just go to like a typical amp and you're trying to get that amount of sustain, drive, brightness. What sort of like your go to settings for a range for this tone? Like in terms of just like of bass, mid range, treble. Um, so it, it it depends on the amp. 
Yeah, but like right now, like with a practice uh, edge, not with like a fancy edge. Cabinet, you know, that you're using, because and then you use when you use a fender uh combo like any any kind of you know classic fender from princeton to twin reverb to oh, not even twin reverb because it's a little too clean but stuff like you know deluxe reverb vibrolux uh vibroverb um i don't know yeah. reverb, anything anything fender you have to kind of set them almost the same way okay which is so, what because they're open back, so they they're gonna be a little little different sounding from the closed back cab, which I currently use a closed back. Because uh -huh. um, I, I just like the the ballsy the tightness, you know, yeah. the tight, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so on the fenders you have to roll the bass down all the way to like three. Okay. Because it gets kind of you know it, it it gets really muddy sounding to me. Mm -hmm. And I like to use middle and treble all the way up to seven, seven, eight. It depends, like how okay. bright you like. If it's too, you know, if it's too harsh, you can dial it back. But I like, I like treble. I like when you know I go and you know I play a high note and it it bites. Yeah, it's got yeah. it's got to have a bite, right? Yeah, yeah, it can't be all pleasant. Yeah. 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 You know, Which is funny, like, you know, it's like for, once again, bringing it to the fusion realm, it's like everybody plays with a really dark sound. Oh, right? yeah. You look at, like, Alan Holdsworth, like, the setting on the amp is bass on zero, middle on eight, treble and presence on one. So it's like... Wow. Yeah. One? On one. So wow. it, that sound is all mid-range, you know? So it's like in Scott Henderson... You know, he'll have a pretty bright amp, but he's playing with the bridge pickup with the tone open on two. So it's like uh, they have to they have to find a place like because they're playing with all that gain, and you know the the bite in the sound when you're playing, it's like it really it makes the notes articulate, it makes them stand out apart from each other, which is a uh -huh. real part of Stevie's thing. But for them, they're all going for blend. They're playing legato. They want the lines to smooth out and the notes to kind of blend into each other yeah. so it's, you're going for the opposite thing yeah. so I, th I think that that's an important thing to uh you know for people chasing tone to realize is that like all the words to describe tone like smoothness and articulation sound good but they can be opposites mm -hmm. that's like like you're going for a really articulate sound yeah. but it, and there's smoothness to it but it's not the notes aren't smoothing into each other like the attacks are clear you're going for clarity for definition yeah. It's like a, it's a it's a whole other thing. Cool. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So okay. So with a closed back, you just have the same settings, but you can allow yourself to dial the bass higher because it doesn't flub. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I and I like to use you know high powered speakers, so mm -hmm. they can they can handle all the all the the punch. And you know I use uh, some drives and I use fuzz face, which drives the amp a lot. In yeah. The, in the speaker. So you, you got to have powerful speakers for that. Like, sure. So in terms of like drives, do you do that thing with like two Tube Screamers kind of deal? Uh, no, but I have uh, something that's similar. So I've got, a, I've got a double overdrive pedal from a friend of mine uh, from Hungary mm -hmm. called Honeybee. You might have heard uh, okay. the brand Honeybee. There's the, uh, the little blue amp over there. Yeah. The, the head. Yeah, that's that's made by him also. So he makes amazing amps and pedals. So yeah, he's, he's got the stuff on online. So anybody wants one. Oh yeah, yeah. well we'll link it check in it the description out. too. Honeybee amps, and so he makes a, a pedal. He, he he makes several, but I use a, a couple of his pedals, and and this one is called the Double Trouble. Uh -huh. So it's like the idea is just, it's like a pair of tube screamers, basically. It's it's one side is kind of like a tube screamer, the other side is kind of like a blues, blues breaker. It's kind of like. Uh -huh uh you know some some other uh boutique makers are are doing the same kind of idea like the dualist kind of the thing dualist, yeah. yeah the dualist was one of the first ones i guess not the first well i was gonna say uh analog man probably created right. something that was uh that ballpark you know the, yeah. the double, double drive you can set them different and you can uh, use them together or separate it, now, it, it, would the tube screamer side of that be like always on for you? No, no, actually. So on my my double trouble, it's got that. 
it's uh, it's got the clean drive uh, side, which is the other one. So that's a okay. screamer and the, and the clean drive. So the clean drive gives me like a very nice transparent, great foundation that has you know chime and and I can adjust the volume and I can adjust the the gain. So if I need more. <laughs> Just a little more sizzle, you know, I can do that. But it definitely gives you a, a really good um, basic foundation on top of the amp's great clean sound. Which sure. Already but is, great. Would that be like something that's on constantly through the gig for you? or For the most of the, most of the time, yes. Okay, with the exception of like maybe like a ballad or something? Uh, or, or maybe I just switched to another Diff Oh, okay, I see. I, I combine them sometimes. There's no, um, sometimes I'm just stepping around. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not even, I, not even just try, try to decide what would sound be best for this solo, but. Right. No, yeah, we all, we all know. I don't okay. wanna, I, I don't wanna dance too much, you know? Yeah. And okay, so, and and so that that's actually real helpful. And uh, another question in terms of like spring reverb, is that something that do you ever play like dry, dry, or is that something that's typically a part I, of the sound? I cannot survive without the reverb. <laughs> I'm the same survive. way. It's I, not how it's not how guitar is supposed to be. There's no option. I got yeah. reverb. I know some guys they are you know play dry, but God, I I love modulation. Yeah, I love a good reverb, spring reverb, and delay, nice and lush and. Sure. How how, uh, how juicy do you get it? Like, how much reverb do you do you use on like a Fender amp? Like, I I use quite a bit. You know, uh, I I like it like that because of. Um, I like it too. Because of guys like Albert Collins, who's one of my biggest heroes in life. And yeah. He was one of the one of the greatest blues guitar players ever. You know, with the the most unique playing style, mm -hmm. and, and so simple, like it's yeah. so, so simple. It's the yeah. Fender, Fender Quad Reverb, which is a freaking monster twin times two, right? Basically, okay. and dimed. Yeah, and and reverb as well. So yeah. his he he is his sound was just bitey and. Well, you know, he was the yeah, ice yeah, no, he was yeah, the ice man. He, absolutely. That was that was his uh, his voice. Well, I'm I'm really yeah, I'm actually really happy you said that because you know there's a lot of people talking about practicing and I dry all the time and it just sucks. And then, <laughs> and then come on, listen, there's, listen there's to no some, vibe to it. Some, listen to some Gary Moore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. We're talking reverb. Right, <laughs> right. massive reverb. But yeah, I mean, I got those Stevie ISO tracks, when you hear them, it's just so much spring reverb. It's so much more than it seems like when you hear it like through the mix. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, when you listen to uh, Lenny, mm -hmm. for example, you know, he's got the... He's, right. got, a, he's got a long reverb going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right, swimming it. So yeah. You gotta have that. Yeah. I, I just I love just the sound you get. We're gonna get to the bottom of this of how you are uh how you're using your your really it's like it seems like just this nice metallic clank from like the way you're just hitting with your right hand where you're hitting yeah. and, uh, and, and again yeah. that, that's the I call uh huh I, yeah. I call this uh this motion or this um, strumming style Stevie's silky sound silky sound silky sound because. Because you're not just digging in with the pick, you 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 have to angle the pick like that. Brush it, yeah. And and, and using your fingertips as well. What do you mean your fingertips? Just the backs of them to to run through the. Oh, well, the uh, actually not the tips, the oh, the, the top like... of your fingers, the the fingernail. You're shitting me. That's a part of the thing. Yeah, at least, at least that. I never realized. That. 
Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. That's a constant thing? Uh, for for Lenny and for... For uh, the ballads? And some, you know, uh... That makes so much sense. Okay. When you isolate like a ballad, can you... Which thing like is it just your index finger or do you feel like other fingers brushing better? Um, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on the yeah. chord too. Like for example, when I play this this chord, you know, I, I usually feel my definitely the, the index and that's so crazy. Yeah. And and also the, the yeah. way he plays the melody. It's an up. He's breaking into it. So when you do this kind of ring, it's like through, I would guess, like a, approximately the A string to the B string? Yeah. Now when you do those, those, those are, that's in like down up. Up down. And then I, that's you know I, I guess for for me and many people the technical challenge of this stuff is the double downs right down 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 right right yeah and th that's all that's all Jimi Hendrix yeah that's all Jimi Hendrix touch right there. And I, I watched uh, an interview with him where he's talking about that. And he makes the example of uh, uh, playing Castles Made of Sand. But Jimmy actually, he played a... He's a little stringier, yeah. Jimmy had this thing going on the almost like playing a pitch harmonic and especially yeah. up here so yeah and That's so 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 just using like the flesh of his thumb to get the harmonic involved and getting closer to the string rather than the brushing kind of yeah. Velvet touch thing that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. it's more, more uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was trying to emulate the Octavia sound. The Octavia, yeah, without the Octavia. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And then, yeah. Yeah, and, and contrary to that, like the Stevie thing would be playing those kind of things with more of a brush kind of yeah. brushing kind of strokes. Yeah. Yeah. So sick. Now when yeah. you when you're playing kind of on the fretboard ish, like you were doing right now, it's it's just to get just yeah, to get the notes sort of hollow sounding. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But then you know I, I use the entire. All the all the parts of the guitar. Yeah. You, know, you get you get the twangy stuff back here. Sure. Yeah, and, and I'm guessing I'm guessing for you at this point it's all just intuitive decisions. It's subconscious. You're it just. Is. Your hands just kind of go to these places to get mm -hmm. the sound, and you know what you're going for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's so in incredible about the guitar in general, and the and the Fender Strat that it's got 
so many different sounds. Yeah. It creates so many different sounds out of it. More, I think, somewhat more versatile than a, a, just a double humbucker configuration because you have, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And, and you can create seven sounds out of it if, if you wanted to. You know, I mean, I think I, I think that's the thing, though. It's like it will give you all those colors as long as you keep it within a range in terms of like gain and yeah. EQ and wetness, and, and, you know, because it's like people, you know, the yeah. evolution of guitar kind of went past that in terms of like you know the amps and what what it can give you. But then you're right. you're back to shrinking your dynamic range mm -hmm. if you're playing like a metal sort of setup and a metal sort of amp. Then you really like you know on Les Paul you basically have three sounds, and yeah. you know you can manipulate them, but it's like everything is way less subtle. Like there's less room for uh, for yeah. for these colors. Yeah, but I mean, if you if you get a Les Paul, you know, you can you can get a lot of different sounds out of that too. I mean, sure, sure. What I have over there, you know, I've got a bunch of different sounds because I've got you know cold tap, I've got uh, phase, uh, right. out of phase sound you know yeah. just push pulls and you have endless opportunities you know, sure to, to well get different sounds dude tommy thank you so much for your time this has been really awesome i hope we, i hope we can do this again soon i think people My will pleasure. be really excited and know. then I'm, uh i enjoy it yeah and we'll, we'll put your links in the bottom here if people want to ask questions uh we can bring them up next time we talk so just leave those as comments and okay. once again, thank you so much for your time, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, well, we really, really appreciate you. It. Hey, well, we, I'm sure everybody will too.